Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. I know a lot has gone on in my life recently, but right now what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about this coronavirus. We're gonna talk about human novel coronavirus, which is infecting Wuhan, China. So before we get into actual viruses, we're gonna spend some time talking about what this virus is and what it's doing. When you look at this human novel coronavirus, it's infected over 1,200 people in China. In the United States, we have two confirmed infections, but we are watching 63 other people, and that's all at the time of this recording. When you think about this coronavirus and why it's so scary, there have been two other almost pandemic or epidemic instances of coronavirus causing serious respiratory infection. This was one in the Middle East that we call MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, and then the other one from China, which is SARS, which is an avian type of coronavirus leading to significant respiratory distress. This we're calling novel coronavirus. There was a paper that was published within the last two days in Lancet talking about 41 cases of this coronavirus in China. They looked at 41 patients and what did they see? Most of these patients were men. A lot of these patients that came in had symptoms of shortness of breath. They virtually all had pneumonia on CAT scan. Remember, pneumonia is a concentration of an infiltrate within your lungs. These patients had bilateral ground glass opacities or bilateral infiltrates in their lungs. Six of these patients died. What did they do for treatment? They used antiviral medications. Specifically, they used, in this population of patients, they used oseltamivir, which is an NA, neuraminidase inhibitor. We normally use it in influenza patients. They also used prednisone to give to these patients to help calm down the immune system. And so what they found was maybe it was effective, maybe not. They're actually doing randomized controlled trials of certain therapies that they're using in coronavirus. When you look at the history in these epidemics in the MERS or the SARS coronavirus, what we used in those populations, we used ribavirin, which is used in hepatitis C, okay? We also used a medicine called lopinavir and ritonavir, which are protease inhibitors. Now, within viruses, proteases are necessary so viruses can continue their life cycle and their lifespan in a human being. So protease inhibitors will inhibit the virus's capability of doing this. And they noticed in using those drugs in those coronaviruses that they were indeed effective. My guess is that these randomized controlled trials in Wuhan, China are going to be using these drugs to see if they're effective against this virus. Again, they've got over 1,200 confirmed cases in China. And so now, worldwide, we're trying to prevent the spread of this infection. So what kinds of things are we doing? Well, we gotta pay attention to patient symptoms and we gotta pay attention to people that are traveling from China back to the United States. I'm focusing on the United States because that's where I live. I'm sure it's happening in other countries as well. I will point you guys to your country's respective websites on their countrywide healthcare. Now, in the United States, the things that we're doing is we're putting people on masks. The word N95 masks because we know that coronavirus can be spread by droplets. It's a large enveloped virus. It has over 25,000 nucleotides within its capsid, within its nuclear envelope. And because of its large presence, it can be spread respiratory droplet wise. So you wanna wear that mask. And so if you're coming from that area and you're coughing to help prevent spread, we're saying wear a mask and definitely get seen. We're getting deep tissue samples in the lung of patients to be able to perform a polymerase chain reaction type of test. Basically, we take samples from your deep respiratory tissue, your lung, and we will multiply this tissue millions of times to see if there is DNA or RNA evidence of this novel coronavirus within your lung. And if it is, you'll pretty much be quarantined after that because we wanna prevent the spread of this virus. When we're thinking about coronavirus naturally, 
What normally is it? It's normally a respiratory virus. And there is a whole slew of respiratory viruses that as a pulmonologist, I test for when patients present to the hospital. What are other respiratory viruses? Well, you've got rhinovirus, you've got respiratory syncytial virus, you've got influenza A, influenza B, adenovirus can sometimes cause respiratory symptoms, cytomegalovirus or CMV can cause respiratory symptoms as well. The herpes virus can cause respiratory symptoms. So you've got HSV1, HSV2, not so much. That really happens in people who are immunocompromised. So those are patients whose immune systems don't work very well. Typically speaking, what our body does to combat viruses is it will create antibodies that will recognize viruses. Viruses have a particular structure. First of all, they're either DNA or RNA viruses. That's what their genome is consistent of. Is this an RNA-based genome or a DNA-based genome? Then they might have a capsid that covers that and protects their genome. Then they might have an envelope. And then they might actually have a lipid membrane on the outside of that envelope. Now, all of these little membranes will have certain proteins. Some viruses have spike proteins, like the coronavirus has an S protein called a spike protein, which is a glycoprotein that resides on the outside of the coronaviruses. Viruses. Other viruses will have M proteins or the nucleocapsid protein or an envelope type of protein. In other words, you have many different types of proteins. Why is this important? Because this is what our body is going to recognize to produce antibodies to basically monitor this virus and neutralize the virus's presence within our bodies. So your body has to recognize these proteins. Once it recognizes these proteins, it manufactures antibodies that will bind to these certain proteins and recruit over white blood cells to fight this infection. When you think about going back to the coronavirus, the coronavirus actually does lead to a lowering of some of the cells that are responsible for making these antibodies. So we call this a lymphopenia or a leukopenia. A leukopenia is overall lowering of the white blood cells. A lymphopenia is lowering of the lymphocytes. We're talking T cells and B cells, which together will help make antibodies to neutralize such infections. Again, Looking at these respiratory viruses in general, 40% of the time a rhinovirus is causing this common cold type of symptoms. That's where you have the pharyngitis, the stuffy nose, you might have a headache. 10% of the time, coronavirus may be causing this. Influenza may be causing the common cold as well, about 5% of the time. And then 20 to 30% of the time, it's unknown or undisclosed type of viruses that the world is still learning about. When you're thinking about respiratory viruses, in adults, 40% of the time, a lobar pneumonia is caused by a respiratory virus. In infants, 49% of the time, if you see a lobar pneumonia, it might be due to a respiratory virus. One of the causes in infants is respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, which is also associated with asthmatics as well. When you develop respiratory viral infections, it can cause inflammation of asthmatic patients. It can cause inflammation of COPD patients. So when they present to the ER, they may have an exacerbation of their asthma or their COPD. So they may wheeze, they may be short of breath, they may cough. This could be due to a respiratory virus. In that case, you wanna get a sample of their lung tissue or a sample of their nasal pharynx, and you wanna run a respiratory viral panel where we test for these different types of respiratory viruses. Now you're probably thinking of treatment for these respiratory viruses. Here's the thing. Your immune system, if it's competent, meaning you have no problems with it, is basically the therapy for these respiratory viruses. Your immune system is going to recognize it and try to clear it over the course of about 10 to 14 days because that's how long it takes your immune system to develop antibodies and manufacture proteins to fight these infections. However, if you're immunocompromised, if you've had a bone marrow transplant, or you have a cancer, or you're on medicine to combat your autoimmune disease, or you have HIV, which infects your immune system cells, it's a different story. 
these are patients that when they're infected with respiratory viruses, we might have to use treatments like ribavirin or ridonavir or other types of medicines that basically inhibit the virus's ability to replicate or continue its life cycle. So it's important for you to understand your medical history. So when you're thinking about respiratory viruses and when you're thinking about coronavirus, is it dangerous? The answer is not really, but yes, depending on the type of virus you have. Again, viruses are much like human beings. What do I mean by that? We all have a mom, we all have a dad. And again, when our mom and dad combine and make children, make us, for example, we might look a little bit like our mom and a little bit like our dad. And someone might recognize that and say, you know, is, is Jamie your dad? Because you kind of look like them. But you'll notice it takes a lot longer for someone to recognize that. Viruses can do the same thing. What we call that is an antigenic drift. So when you think about viruses, and let's really talk about influenza, antigenic drift is when you have a human virus that's also able to co-infect other animals and it can combine with another type of influenza virus that's infecting that animal, those genetics combine. And then you have a virus that undergoes this antigenic drift, right? So now you have a virus that normally infects animals, but it also now can infect humans. That's called antigenic drift. So now you've got your immune system that does not recognize it at all. So it's gonna take a while for your immune system to develop a plan to combat this. In addition to that, every season, people are called to get flu vaccines. This is because over time, you get a little bit of an antigenic shift. So now the proteins that are on the outside of that virus might look a little bit different to the immune system. And this is how they evade the immune system overall. And so viruses can be tricky. We say in the scientific community they're not living. That's because they need us to be able to replicate. But again, it doesn't mean that they can't evade our immune system. So if you're in an area of the world that has a pandemic going on, you need to likely be tested for certain viruses if you have these symptoms. And again, when we're talking about the novel coronavirus that's going on in Wuhan, China, we're talking about shortness of breath, we're talking about fever, we're talking about cough. If you're in that area, it's important for you to understand if you have this virus. No, it's not a death sentence. We've had, out of those 1,200 patients that have been infected in China, 41 of them have passed away. So it's not a death sentence, but we do need to pay attention and we do need to help support those patients and support that part of the world. Today's episode was about respiratory viruses. More specifically, we focused on the novel coronavirus. I wanted to deliver this information to you guys so that you guys can have a better understanding of how viruses infect human beings and how viruses can develop into these serious infections in certain parts of the world. We've learned a lot from the SARS, vi the SARS coronavirus and the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, and I anticipate that we are going to learn much more about this novel coronavirus. But I wanted to deliver this information to you as soon as I possibly could. Take care of yourselves, and remember, be better today when compared to yesterday. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for being here. Trick Jamie Cedric.